Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome everyone to our online NPTEL course Environmental Chemistry and Microbiology. This course will be taught by Professor Shudha Goel and myself on Professor Anjali Pal. We both are from Civil Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts. The first part uh, is Environmental Chemistry that will be covered by me and the second part is environmental microbiology that will be taught by professor Shudha Goel. Uh, so, uh, this is my fifth module and in my first module I have uh, discussed about the acids, bases and salts. In the second module I have discussed about the uh, e chemical equilibrium. In the third module I have discussed about the chemical kinetics. In the fourth module I have talked about the uh, catalysts and in this fifth module I will discuss about the chlorine chemistry and disinfection. So, I started it in uh, lecture number 23rd, it, this is 24th lecture, this is part B. In this lecture I will cover the reaction of chlorine with ammonia, reaction of chlorine with other materials, breakpoint chlorination, chlorine demand chlorine dioxide as a disinfectant, ozone as a disinfectant. Uh, I have already told you that the chlorine is a very good and widespread uh, widely ap um, applied disinfecting uh, agent and I already told you that history how it is slowly slowly how it is started, how it is developed and uh, also I discussed about the chemistry of uh, uh, the chlorine. Uh, how it is uh, forming the hypochlorous acid, how it is forming the hypochlorides. Now, I will show you the reactions of chlorine with other things uh, which is present naturally present in um, water. So, you know that I already told you in nitrogen cycle that ammonia is uh, produced from the degradation of organic matter, uh, nitrogen containing organic matter. So, for example, protein molecules like that. So, ammonium ion present in water remains in equilibrium with ammonia and hydrogen plus that also I have discussed. Now, how it is reacting? NH3 reacts with chlorine or HOCl to form the chloramines. You, you can see I have shown you the, uh, the reactions here. The chloramines are called combined chlorine residuals. The, uh, the chlorine uh, HOCl and uh, uh, OCl minus that means uh, hypochlorides, uh, uh, hypochlorous acid and chlorine all the, these three things are called free chlorine or free chlorine residuals. But the, uh, the um, chloramines which are produced by the reaction of ammonia with uh, HOCl or chlorine uh, that is called the combined chlorine residuals. Okay. Mono and dichloramines have good, they are also having good disinfecting property, but not that as good as the free chlorine residuals. They are not as good, but um, uh, still they are, um, they have the disinfecting power. Formation of chloramines are also pH dependent. So, pH has a major role here. You have seen that uh, in ch chlorine chemistry and also here also you will see that uh, it has a great role. Higher amount of dichloramine, uh, dichloramine is uh, produced at lower pH. Okay. So, what is the reaction? This is the NH3 plus uh, um, HOCl, it is giving monochloroamine. Why monochloro? Mono means one. So, one chlorine is there. So, monochloroamine. And here, further reaction, it gives the dichloro, two chlorine atoms are there. So, dichloramine and then trichloramine, this is a very toxic substance, okay, trichloramine, mainly these two are formed. 
Now, chloramines get decomposed. So, if you increase, you know, chlorine is a very good oxidizing agent also. Okay. So, chlorine is a very very good oxidizing agent, you have seen that and then uh, chlorine uh, if you increase the dose of chlorine then what will happen this this uh, chloramines also will be um, oxidized okay it will be oxidized you see here uh, minus 3 to 0 minus 3 to 0 so it is oxidized and then uh, dichloramines also minus 3 to here um, plus 4 uh, plus 4 state so it is oxidized okay so, uh, it is it is uh, it, it occurs at a higher dose of chlorine if you increase the dose high uh, concentration of chlorine then it will happen. Uh, reactions of chlorine with ammonia present in water this continuation what is this the rate of reaction between ammonia and HCO cell is pH and temperature dependent okay, that I told you the reaction rate is most rapid at pH 8.3 and decreases at, at the as the pH is increased or decreased. So, at a certain pH the, the rate is maximum means it is um, fast very fast, okay. but, uh, but uh, if you increase the pH or decrease the pH it will become slower. Now, chlorine H O cell and O cell minus are, are called free chlorine residuals I uh, told this thing. This is the reason why free chlorine residual and combined chlorine residual coexist after certain contact period say 10 minute or 20 minute. Okay. So, uh, if you allow the chlorine to react for some time and if there is the ammonia present in it which is very common, okay, then uh, what you will see? You will see that chloramine some chloramines have been formed and also some free chlorines are there. So, it is basically a mixture of all those things. Okay. Now, um, so there, there are other, other reactions also can happen. After this stage, so, breakpoint chlorination I will tell you later, but, but here you see the chlorine is an oxidizing agent. So, ammonia, ammonia is oxidized to nitrogen by chlorine, ammonia is oxidized by chlorine to nitrate even this is the highest oxidation state. So, um, chlorine here is acting as the oxidizing agent and these are also produced uh, at higher concentration of chlorine and breakpoint chlorination what is breakpoint chlorination uh, I will tell you later after showing the curve. While the free chlorine residuals are quickly what is the property of free chlorine residual and combined chlorine residual. One property is that free chlorine residuals are better disinfecting agent, but uh, combined chlorine residuals are also uh, have the power of disinfecting power, um, but um, uh, it is weaker compared to the free chlorine residuals. But one advantage of this is there that free chlorine residuals are quickly dissipated in the distribution system. Okay. The chloramines are stable, the chloramines can stay for long period. So, when you disinfect in some place you uh, do the treatment the disinfection you do and then you have to uh, transport the water from that place to some other place. Okay. Then during the passage you have to protect the water. So, if the chloramines are present there then it can protect the water during transport. So, this is the advantage of the chloramines. Uh, sometimes uh, that is why sometimes um, to protect the water from outside ammonia is also added little amount. Okay. So, uh, chloramines are in that sense it is good it can protect during transport also it is oh, long lasting. Okay, transport over long distance it is protecting. Okay. At lower pH some trichloramines may be formed this compound is toxic. So, we should not allow the, the during disinfection we should not allow it to be formed. Okay. We, we should maintain uh, the condition such a way that these things are not formed. Now, so not only the ammonia, but also other things may be present in the water what are they uh, and how they react with the chlorine that is also important. Chlorine and H O cell is a strong oxidizing agent and it reacts and combines with many other different kinds of compounds and they are called uh, the products are called disinfection byproduct DBP disinfection byproduct. Many reactions some of the reactions are fast some of the reactions are slow. So, disinfection now if so many reactions are going on then it becomes complicated right. Now, what are those reactions? 
the and uh, so chlorine we are using chlorine for dis disinfection but chlorine is con consumed by the by some other materials for some other doing some other for doing some other reactions so this is the demand uh, before unless the demand is met we will not get the free chlorine to kill the bacteria okay so those compound first their demand should be met after that we will get the, um, the chlorine okay, for disinfection. So, what are those compounds? The generated the generated chlorinated compounds create health hazard that also possible. So, what are the compounds produced during the reaction um, of chlorine and uh, chlorine with something else. So, they are producing something. So, those may be toxic also. Okay. So, we have to consider all those things say for example, in ground water you know that H 2 S is present or some sulphide salts are present, present because water is leaching through the some sulphide bearing rocks. Okay. So, uh, they can react, they can react to like this. So, you see H 2 S gas can react okay, with chlorine to form H L and sulphur okay. and then there may be some uh, some uh, double bond some compounds containing double bond unsaturated compounds okay so addition reaction we know that in a double bond uh, the something can be added so hocl can be added uh, in the double bond okay so forming this compound okay and now bromide you know uh, sea water can contain bromide so many places bromide concentration may be there in water so, when you disinfect that type of water then HOBr is formed hypobromous acid. Now, HOBr you know that HOBr also is good disinfecting agent, but it contains bromine that is bromine is not a very good substance. So, um, HOBr you know in many countries actually the um, uh, we have shown that chlorine based disinfectant, but bromine based disinf disinfectant also um, are used in some countries I have seen in the swimming pools you know swimming pools uh, HOBR is used. They have disinfecting property, but at the same time bromine is there. So, we are not very confident about it. Now, phenols many uh, many uh, water may contain phenolic compounds or phenols. Okay. So, for them chlorine you know you can add up to in the benzene ring in the phenols there is a benzene ring. So, in the benzene ring chlorine can uh, replace the hydrogen atoms and it can form the chlorophenols. It is dangerously toxic substance and it can have bitter taste also, better bad smell also. Okay. So, uh, they are not very good substance for our health. Chlorophenols are formed. This one organic compounds, you know, humic substances, it is very common in water. Humic substances, they are very stable compounds, but they can react with chlorine to form a special group of compound which are known as. THMs, this abbreviated form that full name is trihalomethane THM. Okay. THMs are um, carcinogenic, even though they are produced in very low concentration, say for example, PPM level or PPB level, but still if we drink that water uh, continuously, then at least some amount is going uh, 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 within us. So, that produces cancer. So, that is also not it is not no long time back, but now we know that this type of compounds you know that what is THM why this name has come you see that every all the compounds it is chloroform CHCl3 it is bromoform CHBr3 it is the dibromo chloroform or it is the dichloro uh, monobromo um, chloroform. Okay. So, here you see uh, everywhere you see 3 halogen atoms are there, 3 chlorine atoms, 3 bromine atoms, 3 uh, 2 bromine, 1 chlorine, 2 chlorine, 1 bromine. So, it is a derivative actually if you think about methane which is CH 4, 3 hydrogens are replaced by 3 halogens that is why tri, tri means 3 halo methane T H M okay. very uh, important group of compound nowadays. Mm, and we should not uh, allow these types of compounds to be formed in our drinking water system. Now, what is demand? I told you just now that chlorine demand is chlorine applied. How much chlorine we have applied and how much uh, chlorine is still there? 
if you subtract residual chloride from chlorine applied then the uh, the um, uh, then you will get the chlorine demand that is the demand. So, demand should be made first okay. after that you will get the free chlorine before that you will not get because it is consumed. Okay. Now, <coughs> this very very important curve breakpoint chlorination curve and chlorine demand. So, this is actually um, you see here, here it is the residual chlorine. Experimentally, this curve we can get experimentally. Okay, this is the residual chlorine, and here it is the chlorine dose. This is the applied chlorine dose. Okay, so we are varying the chlorine concentration, and then we are measuring. We are keeping for some contact time, say 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So we take the sample, then we uh, same sample but different containers same volume we take and then we apply the chlorine there at different doses. Okay. We keep it for some time that is contact time and after that we measure the residual chlorine how much is present and then we plot it against the dose applied dose uh, we plot the residual chlorine. Now, if it is distilled water there is no demand then whatever chlorine we, ap we apply it will remain as residual chlorine then we will get this type of curve. Okay this is the chlorine applied curve or distilled water if we do the experiment it will give, give, get this type of curve. But, if it is a normal sample water then there is ammonia. So, basically ammonia is present unless it is some typical waste water. So, uh, in that case we will get the this type of curve this is the nature of the curve. So, what is why it is increasing for then decreasing then again increasing. So, this part will tell you this the whole part is com combined residual chlorine residual this is the formation of combined chlorine residual this is the uh, means this is the chloramine formation this is the chloramine destruction. So, I told you that chloramines also can react uh, with chlorine at higher dose. So, chlorine chloramine destruction and then everything is destroyed and then uh, here dem demand is made and then uh, this point this minima is called the break point. Okay. And then after that when you increase the dose at an increased dose you will get the free chlorine residuals okay. and this is you see the parallel to this line. Okay. Now, you have to have you have to apply at least up to this point the dose then uh, everything will go and then little bit extra there. So, that uh, some free chlorine residuals are there in the water which will take care of the uh, killing of the micro microorganism that means, the disinfection. Okay. So, that is the um, and you can see here this is the mole ratio um, of uh, chlorine is to uh, ammonia nitrogen. So, at different ratio uh, different things you see here it is 1.5 here and then uh, at lower dose it is like this. So, uh, ammonia concentration also may vary na? that is why it is uh, it is done here. Okay. So, this this we can do experimentally in the laboratory and then for a particular sample we do not know how much chlorine we should apply because if we add too much chlorine that is also not good. Why it is not good because chlorine also uh, not good for health if we add too much chlorine sometimes we can see in the tap water we can see that uh, chlorine smell is coming. So, that means, they have added uh, chlorine in a larger quantity which is not required even. Okay. So, that is not good. So, how to know how to know how much chlorine you should add for a particular uh, sample water. So, we have to do some experiment otherwise how will you know. Uh, so, this is the breakpoint chlorination curve and chlorine demand they we have to know this thing then we can um, apply the proper dose. We can use the chlorine uh, how what are the different types of chlorine we can use chlorine uh, we can use chlorine uh, gas we can use chlorine water we can use uh, hypochlorite we can use uh, bleaching powder uh, bleaching powder also hypochlorite CaO Cl Cl. So, this is also a source of hypochlorite. So, all those things we can apply, but how much how much a dose we should apply that we have to know right. So, how will you know this way we can know. And also the contact time it is when we do the experiment it is always better to uh, measure uh, the contact time should be fixed 
for one sample another uh, for one sample there are several uh, containers I have taken. Na? So, we have to maintain the contact time if because with contact time the ratio all those things uh, reaction uh, is varying. So, uh, we have to maintain that contact time. Now, reaction of chlorine with other impurities, okay. how can we remove THM? I told you that THM formation is very dangerous for us, THMs are dangerous. So, if we want to uh, protect um, our water um, from the THM, then what we will do? We can do two things, there are two options, one thing is pre chlorination, another thing is post chlorination. What is pre chlorination? Pre-chlorination is treatment with uh, 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 treatment with chlorination or treatment with chlorine uh, is um, chlorine chlorination is carried out before filtration. Means first we we do the chlorination, then we filter the water. Why filtering? Because through filtering we can remove the THM that form THM. Okay. So, this is called pre chlorination and what is post chlorination? Chlorination is done after filtration, first we remove the organic materials, then we do the chlorination, both way it is possible. In one case we do the chlorination before filtration, another case we do chlorination after filtration, after removing the organic matter, okay. but there is some uh, there is some uh, advantage disadvantage what is that if we do chlorination first then all the organic matters are there. So, we need more chlorine is not it we need more chlorine and then uh, we can uh, remove the formed products through filtration. If we do filtration first then we do the chlorination then uh, less chlorine uh, is required. Okay. So, in the first case uh, it uh, the um, cost will be more because more chlorine is required okay. um, and uh, what about the quality which one which quality is better and uh, why why this is also important think about it okay. which quality will be better from pre chlorination or from post chlorination think about it. Okay. Now, disinfection you know two things are uh, important one thing is how much disinfectant I am using and how much time I am keeping. Okay. So, for example, I used to go to restaurant that time long time back with geolin bottle say for example, they give us one give me one glass of water I am very thirsty I want to drink it very means uh, as soon as possible means I am very thirsty then what I will do we will add uh, more drops say for example, 5 drops. I will keep for little time okay, may be 5 minutes is enough and then I will drink, but if I am not that thirsty I may not use 5 drops I may use 2 drops and then I can keep it for longer period of time say for example, 10 minutes then I can drink. So, contact time is important and also the concentration and kill is proportional to concentration to the power n into T. Okay. Disinfection is carried out to kill what is the purpose? It is the purpose uh, what is the purpose to kill the harmful microorganism, okay, but it does not give us sterile water which is needed for the um, operations operation theaters and for other purposes sterile water. Is, so, it is not killing all types of bacteria it is only killing the pathogenic bacteria this is true when dis disinfection is done with chlorine or chlorine dioxide this also another disinfectant chlorine dioxide or ozone is another disinfectant these are used in the developed developed countries ozone and this is not much attempted may be much re, some research has to be done may be, but chlorine is most widely used in our country also are using chlorine. Now, and that is with long contact time this I already explained to you that contact time and concentration we can vary depending on our um, means uh, uh, what we want actually. Okay. Then pH and temperature also has great influence that uh, we have already discussed pH and temperature how it is uh, uh, affecting the disinfection and uh, lower pH is more effective for disinfection 
lower pH at lower pH, but we usually do it at around 7 to 8. Okay. And free chlorine residual is more effective compared to combined chlorine residual. I already dis explained, but it is more um, it is uh, required for transport, you know, during transport, combined chlorine residual is important because it can protect the water. Um, because during transport, there may be some contamination, so that uh, it can um, protect that combined chlorine residual can take care of it. Now, disinfection with chlorine dioxide, chlorine dioxide ClO2, uh, chlorine dioxide is a very good disinfectant at higher pH condition. Okay. So, these are the properties that is uh, these are the observations, it is as effective as H2, H2 cell is a very good uh, disinfectant I told you among the three free chlorine residual, this is the um, this is the most effective. So, uh, chlorine dioxide is also very effective and uh, can act at high pH condition, it is an unstable gas this is a gas, this is not solid like K CaOCl or CaOCl C twice or NaOCl, these are all solids we can use. Solid is better, you can carry from one place to another place, but if it is liquid, it is um, still it is ok, but uh, if it is a gas, you cannot carry it, right. So, but this is a disadvantage for chlorine dioxide, ok. It is an unstable gas and it has to be produced on the site itself, where you want to disinfect you have to produce there only. Okay. This is a great disadvantage and how you can produce it, this is chlorine you know it is an oxidizing agent. So, NaClO2 you can uh, see what is the oxidation state, this is the plus 3 state, so plus 3 state uh, to plus 4 state, so this oxidation, oxidation means chlorine is oxidizing. So, um, it is done by um, by mixing a solution of sodium chloride NaClO2 with strong chlorine solution, this way it is produced, it is a gas. At pH below 4, the production of ClO2 is higher, okay. it is costlier compared to chlorine or hypochlorite, the chemistry of ClO2 is not explored much, still it is under you know. Uh, means it is not we are not very confident about this material till now. The advantage is that it does not react with NH3 uh, to produce chloramine, chloramine is not produced this is advantage another uh, thing you can tell that if chloramine is not produced then transport is uh, um, it is not protected, uh, it does not react with natural organics this is good because uh, it does not produce THMs because uh, natural organic material that is humic substances it does not react and so it is not producing THM. Uh, ClO2 in case of chlorine you have seen that chlorophenols are formed, but here you see that ClO2 can destroy phenolic compounds. Okay. So, this is um, this is a good thing the, it can destroy. Okay. So, there are advantages and disadvantages also. Now, disinfection with ozone, ozone is also widely used nowadays in advanced countries, uh, it is very strong actually, strong disinfectant, even at low concentration it acts nicely, um, high cost because ozone uh, production is very difficult okay. uh, uh, and the equipment which is required for ozone production is to be maintained in on the site itself, so again problem. It does not produce long lasting residual, these are advantage chloramines, it does not produce chloramines, advantage sometimes uh, are disadvantage means chlorine chloramines has to be added sometimes. Uh, actually, it is advantage you can uh, disadvantage you can tell. Okay. Another advantage uh, for um, ozone is that that halogenated organic compounds are uh, produced during disinfection, no halogenated organic compounds are produced, because halogen is not there, how halogenated compounds will be produced. So, it is advantage right, a disadvantage uh, is that ozone reacts with natural, but this the ozone is stronger. So, it can uh, it can react with natural humic substances, natural humic substances to produce organic compounds which are more susceptible to biodegradation. Maybe THMs are not produced, but uh, some compounds are produced which are susceptible to biodegradation um, compared to the uh, natural humic substances. Then what will happen? It causes growth 
because some biodegradable substances when present so bacteria will grow and when bacteria will grow. So, in the distribution system so water quality will be reduced is not it. So, th that is a disadvantage with this ozone beyond disinfection ozone has some other effects it can remove the odor it can oxidize uh, iron or uh, Mn 2 plus iron 2 plus or Mn 2 plus which sometimes is present in many water okay, and it uh, when it is oxidized it can be precipitated also as oxide. It can destroy organic compounds uh, that causes uh, odor and taste. So, water quality will be better when it is uh, all these types of compounds are uh, um, is destroyed. Okay. So, ozone is also a good for, uh, uh, possibility but costly. As a reference I can tell Sauer McCarthy the same book you can read uh, very nicely written and as conclusion I can tell for this uh, lecture that disinfection is a very important water treatment procedure to kill the pathogenic bacteria. Chlorine is widely used for disinfection purpose, chlorine produces hypochlorous uh, acid and hypochlorite ion which are known as free chlorine residuals. During chlorination, chlorine reacts with other impurities present in water, it reacts with ammonia present in water to produce chloramines which are also disinfectants and known as combined chlorine residuals. They are weaker, but long lasting breakpoint chlorination and chlorine demand is explained application of chlorine dioxide and ozone as disinfectant is also explained. Okay, so, thank you, thank you very much. <coughs>